Today, you will learn of the notable significance of the month that you were born in. Don't worry, we won't be discussing astrology today. Rather than anecdotal confirmation bias, I'll actually provide you with respectable data. The month that you're born in is something that is completely out of your control, and yet it has a profound impact on your life in numerous ways. Those of which can include your academic performance, athletic performance, career, relationships, mentality, and much more. The theme of today's video revolves around positive feedback loops. As we unpack this topic, I want you to imagine a small snowball falling down a large mountain of snow, exponentially growing as it falls down, picking up more and more snow as the surface area increases, eventually becoming absolutely massive. Let's begin with athletic performance. Let's take hockey for example. How exactly can the month you were born in possibly affect your ability to play hockey? If you look at the birthdays of all hockey players, you'll find a very peculiar pattern. The pattern seems to illustrate a bias towards players born earlier in the year. In fact, even the NHL published an article concerning the matter. The article responds to a recent study in the online science journal PLOS1 stating that the study suggests that the NHL is guilty of an age bias because it weighs its draft selections more heavily in favor of players born earlier in the year. Now, looking at the data, this does indeed appear to be true. But of course, the NHL shouldn't be at fault. Why would they deliberately discriminate against age? What's the benefit in that? The report found that 36% of players drafted by NHL teams between 1980 and 2007 were born in the first quarter of those years or from January to March compared to only 14.5% of the draftees who were born in the fourth quarter. With a consistent discrepancy that large, surely this can't just be a coincidence. You're right, it is not. The article that NHL published briefly touches on the reason for this and it has to do with the selection bias starting at a very young age when the kids are still developing. The difference between two 17 year olds born in separate months isn't very notable considering they have already experienced the overwhelming majority of their physical and mental growth. On the other hand, the difference of just a few months can make a massive difference when the child is very young, which is when most kids can begin playing competitive sports. The cutoff date for kids' hockey divisions, as well as many other sports, is the start of January. And so you might see that two kids are seven years old at the start of the year in their division, but perhaps one of them turns eight within the first few days, and the other doesn't turn eight until all the way in December. The kid who turned eight sooner, in January, is more likely to not only be larger physically, but also to have more developed motor skills. Now, of course, this won't always be the case. Depending on one's genetics, perhaps the younger kid might even develop faster, but that's an outlier, not the rule. We're looking at the bigger picture here, which would indicate that the eight-year-old would have more advantages than the seven-year-old. Consequently, this eight-year-old would be more likely to perform better, perhaps even the best on the team, because of his developmental advantages. Well, certainly this could only last for so long, right? As we established earlier, the development difference between 17-year-olds is negligible, and yet the amount of earlier birthday months still manages to overwhelmingly exceed the later birthday months. So why is this? Well, it primarily has to do with the positive reinforcement. The kid who is the best on the team is going to receive a lot of positive reinforcement for his performance, thus motivating him to dedicate even more time into practicing the craft. That kid might even get special attention from the coaches. He might get drafted to elite teams where he'd be competing with and against superior competition, etc. Malcolm Gladwell explains this phenomenon in his book Outliers really well. He states, it's a beautiful example of a self-fulfilling prophecy. In Canada, the eligibility cutoff for age class hockey program is January 1st. Canada also takes hockey really seriously. So coaches start streaming the best hockey players into elite programs where they practice more and play more games and get better coaching as early as eight or nine. But who tends to be the best player at age eight or eight? 
the oldest of course, the kids born nearest the cutoff date, who can be as much as a year older than the kids born at the other end of the cutoff date. When you are 8 years old, 10 or 11 extra months of maturity really does mean a lot. And remember, this same phenomenon occurs in many more sports too, and it's all relative to the cutoff date. As Malcolm continues, you see the same pattern to an even more extreme degree in soccer in Europe and baseball in the US. It's one of those bizarre, little remarked upon facts of professional sports. They're biased against kids with the wrong birthday. But sports are merely scratching the surface. I've simply used them as an example to help you comprehend the reasoning behind this phenomenon. This really applies to anything in life that has its own age divisions. School, for example. Just like your body, your brain and cognitive ability develops as you age. Hence, the oldest kid in the class generally has an advantage over the younger kids. And again, I say generally because genetics play a major factor as well, so again, think big picture, large sample size. In fact, many parents now intentionally are holding their kids back precisely for these developmental advantages. Most interestingly is that this positive feedback loop extends far beyond just sports and academics. It ends up shaping who you become as a person. For example, as a result of getting good grades as a child, you'll perhaps be more inclined to continue the work ethic required to maintain those achievements and positive reinforcements rather than getting bad grades and being discouraged. Perhaps the work ethic will extend beyond academics as well. Even just considering academics alone, it could really be a major influence on your future career or perhaps you might not even have one. This snowball effect can hypothetically extend even further. If you have a very high paying job versus no job, even your relationships will be extremely different. Perhaps you might not even have any at all. Of course, these are just extreme examples, and the overwhelming majority of people will lie somewhere in the middle. Nonetheless, this is a significant environmental factor that seems to be mostly ignored. Everyone always talks about wealth inequality. Well, how about birthday in- <laughs> You get the point. While I do believe genetics often play the most notable factor, environment certainly does too. And this is perhaps one of the most overlooked environmental factors, which can actually be controlled by a parent or guardian, allowing for an effective, strategic, positive feedback loop. But anyway, that will conclude it for today. With that said, subscribe for more thought-provoking content like this, leave a like if you enjoyed, or perhaps comment your notions down below. If you enjoyed this, I'd highly suggest watching my video on free will as well. The link for Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell will be in the description below. This is the book that inspired me to make today's video, and I'd highly recommend it. But with that, have a great rest of your day.